Well, hi again, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. Today, I want to talk about this little uh, tabletop clock here. Uh, the name brand uh, on there, it says Citizen. Uh, of course, they're better known for their watches, high-end watches and, you know, stuff like that. So I, I, I'm going to guess that this clock is not made side by side in the same factory with all the watches you love from Citizen. But uh, it, there are some unique things about this that make it stand out from your average clock that you might just go down and buy at your local discount store. First of all, a lot of metal pieces on here. Nice brushed silvery pieces uh, here. It's got a nice solid base down here. So, um, you know, this, this this makes it so it would, you know, it sits pretty stable on a table or a desktop or a mantle or wherever you want to put that. I weighed it uh, with my little, you know, kitchen scale. It's about 570 grams or um, the same scale showed one pound, four ounces, something like that. So, you know, substantial, not too huge, but uh, again, not easily knocked over if it's just sitting sitting out there. So I, I guess the, the main selling point here, the thing that attracted me to it was the skeleton clock design. You know, you can see all those gears in there as this thing is running. So, and, and then it just, you know, it's just a nice, clean, modern looking design already. Uh, it, it actually comes with a little, little plate you can put right there. You can have it engraved, a little metal plate. Uh, engrave that, and then there's a self-adhesive, uh, you know, backing on it, so you can just stick that on there if you want to. Uh, some places I saw online, maybe they would engrave it for you and personalize it for you, uh, but the way I got it, I just had that little plate that I could take in and have engraved if I wanted to. So, you know, you could put, you know, happy birthday, dad, or, you know, <laughs> employee of the month, or, or whatever it is you want to stick on there, uh, you, you can do that with a little plate that comes with it. Now, um, as I said, it's got this kind of skeleton design where you can see all those gears there. Let's just do a little quick comparison. This is kind of your standard quartz movement that you see on a lot of uh, clocks. This was a very inexpensive thing. I just picked up at an Ikea store. So, you know, there's your clock. And with this one, uh, of course, it's got, you know, the battery right there. And all the gears and everything that m make the hands move, that's all self-contained inside this little... Uh, you know, this little box here and that nice self-contained movement. All these gears that are inside here, you can just barely see because this is a translucent case. But those interact with the shafts that come out the front of the clock to turn, you know, the turn the shafts that make the hands move. OK, so, uh, you know, that that's pretty standard. You're going to see that kind of a movement on uh, just about every clock you're going to see for sale at your local discount store. So imagine that they took all these gears that were in here and rather than having them self-contained in a box, they moved those gears out here where you can actually see them. So that was a, you know, I, I, I kind of like that idea. These are actually working gears. Uh, they're not just decoration, but uh, most of them are moving so slow that you're really not going to perceive their movement. Uh, of course, you're going to see the gear that moves the second hand here, and that's the one that's moving the most. And then other gears next to that, you can see are moving just a little bit. But as you get farther and farther up here, uh, the movements are going to be so slow as to be imperceptible. But those are the real gears that are making the hands move. And so that's kind of a nice design here. If I do like a time lapse, then you can get a better idea that, yes, they really are moving, and that's what they are. So uh, again, they've kind of redesigned the, the standard movement box to put the gears out here. And what you're left with is really just this, this part right here. Uh, you know, you put the battery in, in here, and uh, the movement box itself that, uh, you know, does not contain all these gears is just a little piece that's not much bigger than the battery that sits here in the middle of this, uh, in, inside this case. So you've got this, you know, kind of clear plastic out here uh, and clear plastic on the front. So you can see all these things here. Let me just quickly take the, uh, the battery cover off. And so there you can see just a, just a double A battery. So that gives you a, a, a sense of scale here. That's a double A battery. And those are all the other pieces. So, you know, this is not a huge clock, not too big, not too small. There's a knob right here that you use to actually set the time. So let me turn this around and show you on here. If I turn that knob there, I've set the time. And, you know, that's pretty standard as far as that goes. And then after that, just let it run. Of course, it's mostly silver and, you know, brushed and, and polished uh, silver look there. And then uh, down here, you know, you've got that kind of a rose gold hands and uh, and these other markers for the for the hours 
are also kind of that rose gold. So, you know, very, very stylish, very nice looking and uh, just kind of a fun piece to have. You're going to get your standard quartz accuracy. So, so this is kind of the best of both worlds for some of us. You know, you get that skeleton look, you get that mechanical look, but you also get the accuracy and convenience of quartz. So you stick a battery in there and uh, probably won't have to do anything, uh, you know, to keep it running, except change the battery every couple of years. <laughs> and uh, maybe every time there's a change for daylight saving time, you would adjust the time. But for the most, uh, for the most part, you know, once you set it, you can just leave it running and it'll be fairly accurate because quartz movements like this are always fairly accurate. And you may be wondering, okay, what's the bottom line on a fancy citizen clock like this? I think I've seen them for, you know, maybe up to a uh, hundred dollars. But uh, if you shop around carefully, you shouldn't have to pay that much. I think you might even find it for, um, you know, under $60. Just, you know, just, just look around. Uh, look for the model number, model CC1027, and eventually you might find a good deal uh, from, you know, from your standard, tr uh, reliable, <laughs> trustworthy uh, online retailers. That's kind of where I went for this. Uh, uh, of course, other, you know, maybe high-end jewelry places uh, that are near you, some brick-and-mortar stores might carry this or be able to order it for you if uh, you'd rather get it from someone like that. But I suppose you'd probably pay closer to that $100 price tag if that's what you did. And again, here's just a look at what you're actually seeing here where uh, maybe there's just one gear that interacts uh, with the stuff inside this little box. And once that gear moves, you know, and it just kind of gives you a tick every second, then it eventually interacts with all the other gears. And that is what makes the clock run. And again, one last look at how it looks all together. Here's my average size hand up against it so you can see how large it is. Uh, you know, not too big, not too small. And there you go. Citizen CC1027 uh, analog quartz tabletop mantletop clock. Um, I like it. Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you for watching this episode of The Good Timekeeping Show, and I'll have more clocks and watches and things to tell you about timekeeping coming up very soon.